Hello there, honey badgers. Jonathan Levy here with Bitcoin for the masses. And stick around because in this video, I'm going to share with you the pros and cons of something called Shamir Backup. Why you should potentially look into it for protecting your Bitcoin, how it actually works, what are the pros and what are the cons. So smash that subscribe button and stick around. Hey there, everyone, Jonathan Levy here, and I am so excited to be talking to you about the topic of today's video because it's a really exciting one and a really cutting edge one in terms of Bitcoin security. Now, I'm going to take as a given that all of you understand the importance of moving your Bitcoin off of exchanges and onto a wallet that you control. Ideally, you want to move if you are working with large amounts, you want to move your Bitcoin off of any exchange, that's the most important thing, but also off of what are known as hot devices, such as your computer or phone, which have a chip in them and can communicate. And you want to move them onto a hardware device with a dedicated secure element that controls your keys and protects them from the internet in what is known as air gapping, or at the very least, having it so that the device cannot leak the keys via USB or anything like that. Hardware wallets are maybe a topic that we'll get into in another video. It is a little bit more elementary, but I am taking as a given the idea that you should be storing your Bitcoin on a different wallet. And ideally, you want to be storing on a hardware wallet. Now, you might ask yourself, what happens if something happens to the hardware wallet? What happens if I drop it in the bath? I don't know why you would be bathing with your hardware wallet. But what happens if I'm traveling and I run through a puddle and it gets wet. What happens if, heaven forbid, my house burns down? And for that, what you do is you back up the keys. Many of you may be familiar with the idea of a BIP39, Bitcoin Improvement Protocol 39 key, which gives you 24 words. That is the more recent and more secure version that you simply need to back up. There are 24 easy words that you need to write down in order to back up your keys. Then all you need to do is take any wallet, it doesn't even have to be a hardware wallet, and restore those 24 words right into one of these devices and you're off and away. Now, here's the issue with those backups and here's why many people feel that they are not as safe. If someone finds your 24 words, there is no pin or passcode on them like there would be on these wallets. If someone is able to find your 24 words and that is your entire backup strategy, well, guess what? They can restore it even into a simple mobile wallet and immediately steal your Bitcoin before you are even aware that something has happened. And so this raises a lot of questions about, well, how secure is that BIP39 protocol? It's extremely secure if no one finds your backup. But if you're trusting a bank employee and one day the bank decides to clean out vaults or the government decides that someone, and this recently happened in LA, someone in the bank is a criminal and they decide to confiscate all of the bank vault accounts or all the lockbox accounts and do an investigation, well, now you have to really hope that everyone at the police station is uh, on the up and up. And I'm sure they're doing a run of the mill investigation, but someone could find those 24 words and restore your Bitcoin and you would be none the wiser. In fact, you would be powerless to do anything about it unless you preemptively moved your keys off. Now, there are a couple different solutions for this and many people for many, many years have been using what is called multi-signature or multi-sig wallets. What that means is I may have two, three, four, or 20 wallets and a minimum threshold in order to move my Bitcoin. For example, one possible way, and this is a way that is often advocated by CASA, a custodial company that will help you run through the different ways to set up multi-signature, is they will tell you, set up three wallets, one of which is a simple mobile wallet where you can initiate transactions using their app or any app that supports multi-signature. Another can be a hardware device, such as a Trezor, and a third can be one of the above, either a hardware or software device, or a key that CASA controls. You could do two out of three, three out of five, and on and on and on. What's great about this is it allows you to not send the Bitcoin unless you have multiple signatures, however many you decide, whether that's three of five or two of three or whatever. The downside is 
You cannot send your Bitcoin unless you have multiple keys. It gets much, much more difficult and much, much more confusing just to initiate a simple transaction. You need to potentially go to different locations just to send that transaction. And what really turned me off from this idea initially uh, was that Andreas Antonopoulos points out, you really need to know what you're doing in order to securely back up each one of those signatures without making a mistake. You need to keep all the signatures, ideally. You can afford to lose one or two, depending on your scheme, but you can easily make mistakes. I actually played around with multi-signature years and years ago, created a multi-sig for a company that I was running where I wanted everyone to have equal access, and I backed up only my keys, and some of the other people didn't back up their keys, and we lost access to that wallet. So multi-sig can be confusing, it can be difficult, until Taproot is actually activated, which is a technical protocol improvement. It can be more expensive to send from the multi-signature addresses as opposed to the updated BCH1, the latest and greatest and most efficient form of Bitcoin addresses. Don't worry about all that. That's all very technical stuff. But suffice it to say that unless you're using a custodial solution or a company that helps you with your multi-sig, it can be confusing and you can make mistakes that will cost you access to your Bitcoin. Enter the idea of Shamir backup. Now, Shamir split backups are something that was invented by Dr. Adi Shamir, a renowned Israeli cryptographer. And the basic idea is this. In the same way that you would have multi-signature for a multi-sig wallet, Shamir is a kind of, sort of, multi-signature, but the difference is you can sign and send transactions from one device, but to restore a backup, you need multiple signatures. Now, you can go anywhere from two out of three, three out of five, five out of 10. You can go all the way up to 16 split backups, and you can set the threshold. So, for example, if you want eight out of 16, if you want three out of five, if you want 15 out of 16, you determine what's gonna be convenient for you to store based on how many secure locations you have and also based on your attack surface. If you are a public figure and you are publicly talking about Bitcoin like I am, you may want to have more backups and a higher threshold so someone needs to find a lot of your backups in order to restore them. Now, before we get into the pros and cons, I wanna talk a little bit about how it works because it is really interesting and you might think to yourself, well, okay, that's cool. I have 24 words. I'll just split them into four groups of six and I will distribute them and I've made my own Shamir backup. No, you cannot do that because the order of your words in the BIP39 protocol is absolutely paramount and important. And also, if you lose some of those words, you are in deep shit. Do not mess around with this. Do not play around with creating your own Shamir backup because it does not work like that. You need the exact order of words. You need all of the words. Even if you create overlap, there are sophisticated attacks. For example, if you were to do two groups of 16 words and there's overlap and you sp you're gonna get into trouble and also you could reveal your keys inadvertently. So Shamir backup is a completely different way of doing your backups. And the way it works is much, much more sophisticated than I understand. But basically what it does is there are, I believe three of the first words identify that you are on a Shamir backup and tells the system or the device restoring the backup that this is a Shamir backup and identifies. So the first three words, I believe, are the exact same on every one of the backups. And the fourth word tells the backup or tells the device which of the keys you are restoring, I believe through alphabetical order. It doesn't really matter to understand, but what you need to know is baked into the first few words in the Shamir backup is the kind of cryptographic system that tells the device, okay, you are getting key one, key five, and key four out of seven keys, and then the rest of the information is enough for your device to hash everything together and generate your keys. So it is a completely different kind of system and you cannot replicate it. Now, what are the benefits of Shamir Backup? Well, the first and most obvious one is that if someone finds one of your backups, be it on a CryptoSteel device, which I have here, 
or on a piece of paper, that is not enough for them to steal your Bitcoin. And this is huge, especially if you are the kind of person who has a safe at home, you have a housekeeper who's probably already found the safe, and you maybe want to store your keys in a way that is convenient to you in case you ever lose your device or damage your device. It is huge to be able to sleep easy at night. You could even FedEx the keys to a trusted family member in another country because if it gets intercepted and they don't get the keys, guess what? The person who intercepts cannot actually restore the keys. They might think they can, but what they'll notice is that Shamir backups use 20 words instead of 24, and that is not the 12 word or 24 word backup. And by the way, I wanna note that it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you don't trust the person who is holding one of your backups, it can just be negligence. You know, it doesn't have to be a situation where that person, it could be your family member, is actually trying to steal your Bitcoin. They could just be negligent. I have seen so many people trust someone with a key and explain to them, hey, you know, this is a very important piece of paper. Nobody can see this piece of paper. Otherwise, it will cost a ton of money and da da da. And then the trusted person that they give one of their backups to just puts it in an envelope and puts it on their desk or puts it in their desk drawer. Many people, if they are not in Bitcoin, if they're not watching this channel, they don't understand the importance of self-custody. They don't understand just how serious this stuff is. And so if you need to depend on other people for your backup, and you should have backups of your backup, ideally, you're going to need to make sure that it is stored in a safe way, either in that person's safe, in that person's bank vault, and so Shamir Backup adds an additional benefit here in that you don't really have to worry about that person doing something stupid. As far as you care, that person could pin it up on the refrigerator because it is not enough to steal your Bitcoin or restore your backup. So that's a huge, huge benefit for Shamir Backup. Another thing, and this is kind of in the same vein as the other one, you can afford to lose backups. So you could even store backups in places that you maybe normally wouldn't. For example, you could put them underground and literally dig them and put them underground because if you lose one, it doesn't matter so much. You could hide them in places where other people may find just to be able to split and separate your backups in case of something catastrophic such as a fire or someone preventing you from accessing your home. There are all kinds of different things. You can also split the backups in such a way that if you are ever in a situation under duress, you are not able to get to all of them without someone having to physically move you locations. Most attackers, most kidnappers do not want to have to move you because it is a risk for them of being seen. So if you distribute your backups to many different locations, ideally as much as an hour apart, it's going to be really, really hard for those people to convince you to give them your backups. And ideally, you may also want to have some duress protections on your devices yourself, or do not keep your devices, if you're using cold storage and not transacting with them very often, just don't keep your devices with you or on you at any time. Keep them in a very separate location so that if attacker attacks you, you have plausible deniability in saying, I don't have my Bitcoin, I don't have access to my Bitcoin right now, and if you want my backups, Here's one, but we're gonna have to take a car ride for an hour where there are many other people at the bank who will see you holding a gun up to my head. So those are the pros of Shamir Backup. I wanna talk a little bit about the cons because this technology can seem like it's all pros. I mean, you're using the latest, greatest BCH addresses, which is incredible because you're saving on fees and you are up to date on the latest native SegWit addresses you have more security, you don't have to worry about the integrity of your backups, you can afford to lose backups, but there are a couple cons. One of them I slightly touched on with the idea of duress. If you have a multi-signature wallet, a true multi-sig where I need one device, two devices, out of three devices or three out of five to sign transactions, then I literally cannot be put in a situation under duress. For example, I know that Casa on their highest level membership has a special sort of passcode or situation. I don't want to reveal exactly how that works, but you can essentially set it up so that you have to call them and say, hey, I signed the transaction on my software wallet. I signed it on my hardware wallet. I need you to sign it on your end. And if you give them a special keyword or something, I won't get into how you say it, but if you tell them something that is not quite right, 
they will refuse to sign the transaction for you. With a Shamir backup, any one of the devices, which you can have on different devices, or more likely you would have it on one device, you can sign any one device. And so if you are put in a situation where you are under duress and the attacker is relatively savvy, they may understand that, okay, your backups aren't here, but you have a device somewhere and that device all by itself is enough to sign and send a Bitcoin transaction. So that is a little bit more of an issue. They can force you to put in your pin code and send. So you may want to look into other duress solutions if you are worried about being held at gunpoint or the $5 wrench attack, as we call it. The idea that someone will just hit you with a $5 wrench instead of having to do some sophisticated man in the middle hacking encryption uh, you know, attack via cyberspace. If that is an issue for you, you may want to look into a proper multi-signature solution, ideally with someone like Casa who is gonna hold your hands and make sure in a non-custodial way that you can access your backups and that you do it right. Or you may want to look into hidden passphrases, having a dummy wallet, a fake wallet that uh, is designed in such a way that it will be believable to attackers that that is your full wallet. I'm not going to share what I do, but no, I want you all to know I do not have access to all of my Bitcoin readily. Uh, and in order for someone to steal my Bitcoin, you would have to take me to multiple locations. You would have to interact with other trusted third parties who cannot access all of my Bitcoin by themselves and do not know each other and on and on and on. So just know if you're watching this video, not only am I protected against the $5 wrench attack, but I couldn't give you all my Bitcoin if I wanted to. The other downside of Shamir Backup is it is creating more backups for you. Now, that's all good if you're storing your backups on paper, but if you wanna be fireproof and waterproof and store them in something like a crypto steel cassette or my favorite, the Keystone, that can get a little bit expensive. I've seen the HODL packs that Trezor sells with the crypto steel capsules go for as much as 500 euros because many of these devices can cost 100 or 150 euros each. Now, Keystone, I think, is really, really awesome. They have devices, I think, for $39 or $49 at the time of this recording. So that's actually not too, too expensive. And keep in mind, you don't have to store all of your Shamir backups. You can afford to lose one or two. So maybe you store just the minimum threshold on steel. Maybe you create your own steel backups. I'm gonna be doing a video on how I used a home crafting device to securely store some of my own backups. But uh, it is not too, too expensive if you wanna pick up three of these for $150. That's a pretty reasonable thing. Now, the last one that I wanna share is the idea of compatibility and interoperability. The biggest, biggest complaint that I've seen against Shamir backups is that at the time of this recording, there are two hardware devices in the world that support it. One is the Keystone Pro, which I have done a video reviewing, and the other is the Trezor Model T. Now, these devices each have their own pros and cons. I've done a comparison video that I'll be sharing soon about the pros and cons of these two different devices, but the main issue with the Shamir backup is if you find yourself in a situation where your wallet is destroyed, you need to get one of these two wallets in order to be able to restore that backup, which can take time. And if you are worried that someone has stolen your keys and has access to more than the threshold number of keys to restore, that may be a situation where you need to FedEx overnight one of these devices from the supplier, hoping that they are in stock. They often do sell out. And you have to hope that someone is going to uh, not access your Bitcoin in that amount of time in order to uh, send it out. So. That's a pretty unlikely scenario that your device is going to get destroyed and or at the same time, you are going to believe that someone has accessed multiple of your keys. More likely what's gonna happen is your device gets destroyed. Some of these devices are uh, water resistant. I believe the Keystone is, at least one of the versions is. The Trezor is definitely not water resistant or waterproof. Neither of them are fireproof. so. I do recommend keeping them in a fireproof safe, but more likely the situation that's gonna happen is your device is gonna get destroyed. You're gonna say to yourself, okay, well, I still know where my keys are. Only one of my Shamir keys was with the device that was destroyed. It may be on steel, so it may still be good, but I still have plenty of backups and there's no rush. At that point, 
you order one of these devices online, you get another one going, you boot it up, you restore the keys securely using the on-screen device, never using your keyboard or your computer, using the on-screen keyboard. You restore the keys out of however many it may be, maybe it's five out of seven, and away you go. So that is a slight downside that if you wanted to say use a ledger or a keep key or cold card or any of these other wallets, they don't support it. And I think it is a testament really to Trezor and Keystone being so security focused that they are the only companies who have actually made this accessible and usable to users. One last con that I do wanna share after talking a little bit about the fact that these are only available, Shamir Backup, on these dedicated devices, the Trezor Model T and the Keystone, you may ask yourself, hey, I've got all of my stuff already in cold storage, Jonathan. I don't wanna pay any fees or sacrifice privacy by moving wallets around. I wanna keep them where they are. I'm already on BC1 latest native SegWit addresses well, unfortunately, you cannot migrate a wallet into Shamir Backup. You have to start fresh with a Shamir Backup wallet as if you were starting any new multi-sig wallet. It is a completely different technology as we talked about, and there's no way for you to migrate your wallet and or use your existing wallet to generate a Shamir version of the backup. You really do have to pick up one of these two devices and start completely fresh. And that can be a bummer if the fees are high. Of course, you can always wait until transaction fees are low on the network and send out all of your coins to different addresses. I would recommend take the time to do some coin joining if you know what that is. Basically merging all of your Bitcoin into one pool and then redistributing them out into multiple addresses, doing what's called a one to many address. It's a little technical for those of you who may not understand, but the idea is you're creating more privacy by splitting your Bitcoin into a ton of different addresses that you own. This is a great opportunity. If you have to send all your Bitcoin, go ahead and mix all the different addresses on your old wallet into one transaction and send out, creating privacy for you, kind of throwing the scent off of uh, your trail. And uh, if you have to pay for some transaction fees to migrate from your old wallet, you might as well do that. So that in conclusion is a summary of Shamir Backup. We've talked a little bit about how it works for non-cryptographers like myself. We've talked a little bit about the incredible pros and some of the very real cons. With all of that said, I do highly recommend Shamir Backup if it suits your situation and you're not someone who feels like you are going to be under risk of physical attack, so much so that you would need to have multi-signature or restrict yourself from having access to your Bitcoin. Again, it can get a little bit expensive to pick up not only the hardware devices, but also the crypto steel or whatever it is, be it a fireproof safe that you need to store these devices when you have five, seven, or 10 different keys. But if you compare that to the idea of having three to five to seven Trezor or Keystone devices, it's actually significantly cheaper. And I think you will sleep much better at night knowing that no one of your keys, whether it's at a trusted third party or in a bank vault or even in your home, no one of your keys is enough to restore your Bitcoin and steal it from you. If you've enjoyed this video and wanna learn more with me about the basics of Bitcoin, I encourage you to do a couple different things. One, smash that subscribe button and let me know that you wanna keep seeing great content. And then I would love it if you shared in the comments, what are some things that you have questions about or don't understand when it comes to Bitcoin? I would love to create some additional educational videos for you. And I look forward to seeing all of you thrive, grow, and hodl. Take care, everyone.